All right, so let's get back to it. Okay, so you can see this is the stump that we are repairing. Okay, and this is actually quite a, a big stump, right? It probably weighs about 10 kilos. So this bow tie is too small for this thing. Okay, so if you want to really repair a, a big stump like this, please make sure you get a bigger bow tie. But I'm actually making this video for one of our first customers, uh, one of our uh, uh, home study students and uh, that's Sean. Hi Sean. So he actually has this huge uh, tabletop and he wants me to do a video for him but I don't have the time to make uh, proper repair for a stump like this so just teach you in concept how to do a small bow tie like this. Okay. However it would still work because well the bow tie is meant to prevent the lock from splitting further this direction so first thing you got to do is to mark out the stump I'm gonna use a pen here because I realized you guys couldn't see the thing very well make sure you use the correct side of your material if not your bow tie might be uh, the, the tracing has to be on the top right because that's the, that's the part you're gonna see you want to put the neck of your bow tie on the crack you don't want to bow tie like that. That's going to first look ugly. Secondly, functionally, it will make zero sense. Okay, the bow tie has, the, the neck has to be on the line. So that right coming out here, there's a taper. Okay, I'm just going to move, I'm just going to move on with this and um, try and bow tie this. Trying to describe it out as clearly as possible. So you want to be super accurate with your line. You want to get as close to the the, the corner of the of the, the thing as possible. If you draw it wrongly, then you're gonna to have to put it put it put it put it back a lot of times in order to get the right fit, and that's gonna slow you down. Okay, so trace accurately, and then never look at the tracing again. Okay, very good. So I'm gonna start chopping now, and here you can see the scribe the little pen mark so for very accurate chiseling you want to adopt a technique that looks like this let me zoom out and show you okay so most of the time when you're mortising you tend to hold the handle like that and you'll be chopping 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 right here we're gonna do some detailed uh, chiseling so you actually hold your chisel on the knife itself okay this doesn't come very, very intuitively for everyone but I want to show you why right now okay so you can see here we are trying to cut this Okay. Oh yeah, actually you saw this same technique when uh, Chongkit was using uh, was using a chisel to pair his uh, ring. And yeah, you can see right, the reason for holding it at this uh, angle is because that uh, you want to be moving very agile, uh, uh, fast and agilely and across the end. Okay. If, you, if I held, now I'm holding it in the top and you can see if I'm trying to move, right, I tend to be a little, my left and right motions tend to be a bit more uh, shaky because of the fact that, uh, yeah, just a small movement in my hand on top produces a big movement on below. Okay, secondly, you, you hand rest your, your hand. Your hand can be rested on the, the thing, it makes you less tired and you can do it as if you are trying to write on the thing. Okay, so try to adopt this technique, hold the blade, don't hold the top and that might make you work faster and more accurately. Okay, so I'm going to start right now, back in the, the, the zone here. I want you guys to, I'm focusing the camera really small now, really close up now, so that you can actually see the way that the material is removed. You might not become super obvious to you at the first time, so watch this again. You would, uh, those things will help you to determine what, what to do in, uh, to improve your technique further on okay so uh, key thing to take note that this is end grain so end grain means that the fibers or the wood is running up this way whereas um, so the, the wood is actually orient oriented at 90 degrees because this is a stump and that's going to make your work a lot more painful it's a lot more difficult to, to do this cut okay. and because you draw you drew your line around the, the peg around the bow tie so therefore when you chisel you're gonna go around the boat, around the line, inside of the line also. You don't want to be uh, 
cutting the line away that would just make no sense okay so this is a knife wall you can see the knife wall there and I'm gonna just trace it very uh, accurately across okay so the end grain of a block like this is going to absorb the damage from your chisel a lot more easily, which means that you would find that the chisel enters the end of the en enters the wood really easily. But later, when you're when we're wasting it, when we are removing the, the the material, you will find that uh, it is really really uh, tough to to pair the the, the the bottom surface that it's uh, gonna. At the bottom of the, of the bow tie recess and that's because we're going to be cutting a lot of the fibers away directly on the face the face of the lock okay so uh, another technique that you could use instead of holding the blade here for accuracy is you can try doing a, you know a walk like this okay a little jalan 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 Okay, so if you're going to be holding your chisel away from the blade, sometimes you would kind of just walk the walk into the motion so that your chisel actually never leaves the board. It never leaves the surface. And that also helps you to get a bit more accuracy in your cuts. And I'm going to demonstrate that for the last little bit here. Okay. And, but that's not uh, obviously not as easy as just holding the blade itself. So a lot of people would, would, would uh, discuss on the chisel technique, sawing technique and very often you will find yourself using more than one technique simply due to fatigue. Every technique has a certain weak point and if you do, you're doing something the same way over and over again you will get a bit um, a certain stress point on your, on your hand. In this case the chisel, holding the chisel technique can make it the chisel feel really heavy because of the leverage so you might want to avoid that. Okay, so learn a few different techniques and play around with it so you don't get your repetitive stress injuries or anything of that sort. Okay, so now I'm going to try and remove the, the material. We're going to start by a small amount there. Okay, I realize you can't, can't... Can you guys see this? Oh, that, that looks okay actually. Okay. So, if you watch my first chisel video, I did explain about the bevel. In this case, we are going to be... Let me draw a little picture here. Just shift the little thing here. Okay, so let's look at the surface of the material. Let's say this is the surface of the material. Your chisel is going to come in uh, like this. Okay, hold on. Let me just draw it on this side. Okay. Okay, so suppose this is the chisel. Okay, so this is the um, this is the chisel here. Okay, and you can see as you cut the knife wall, you're gonna create a little groove that looks like that. So you're gonna cut right in this way, and if you continue to chop in, the bevel of your chisel will actually push your knife to the side like that. So instead of just chopping straight down, you're gonna walk outwards to the side here and chop a little bit more and then deepen that and then come back in for the cut okay I'm gonna show you what that looks like in real life now so that you can have a better idea I'm gonna orientate the, the block this way so hopefully you can see how the material comes off there okay so here we are doing the the deepening cut you can see the, co the fibers on this side compressing towards this end. Okay, it's actually quite flexible because it's end grain. And now I'm going to come back in here from here and I'm going to lean back the chisel slightly. And that comes loose. And now back in the front. You can see the little wet shape comes out and you can see the slot is in a sort of a V shape like that 
okay it's vertical here and then on the in outside here is vertical you're gonna do that around the entire edge so this is kind of like uh, coloring the edge of a piece before you color the center okay and this is the this is the technique that will give you a high degree of accuracy on the on the back of your on the back of your on the outline of your bow tie okay if you don't do it like this right and just start mashing it straight down you're gonna find that your chisel is gonna be pushed into the line and that's not going to turn out very well for your result painting. So this is actually not something that is uh, not, not, not the same as what you would have in a mortise because most mortises are cut on the, the face of the material and not the end of the material. And chopping a bow tie on the, the end of a material is actually also actually not that common. But I'm doing this video purely for Sean's uh, request where he has an end grain slab that's going to be uh, that require this operation okay so uh, if you're doing this on a regular uh, tabletop you will be cutting into uh, face green side green which is much uh, easier to cut and also but has a sort of a direct directionality to it and uh, if you guys want me to cover that in the actual complete video please let me know in the video in the comments so that I would take time to draw another one of make another one of those videos out. So I want to demonstrate another technique for the removal of the material that I just discovered. So I found it to be a lot easier to remove the mater the, the material on the end grain with this new uh, different approach. I'm going to demonstrate that right now. So you can see. The knife wall is really previously established. I'm just going to deepen the knife wall very slightly to give myself a bit more to work with. Okay, so once the knife wall is established, then you take the right side of the chisel or the, or the, the outside of the chisel, right? Whichever side it is. And you're just going to pair off the end grain over there. This turned out to be much more efficient in this case. Can you see that? Okay, I'm gonna go a bit deeper now. Mm, that was so much faster than uh, the previous method. So, which will be more applicable if you were doing it on a uh, face green. As you can tell, it's actually my first time doing this on end green. So, Lots to learn. Okay, gonna finish that up on the other side. So now I run a risk of actually pairing outside of that so I'm going to turn it around so that I'm pairing towards the inside of the bow tie so that I don't make a mistake and uh, plop it off 